Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Monday, April 18th, noontime. Mountain Time 2022. The last 48 hours on the sun have been quite active. An X flare, five M flares, and as many C flares. But the big story snowfall, a nor'easter coming late April. Holy macaroni. Keep calm. It's boom time. Ski resorts cheer as spring storm dumps snow in California. The snow totaled three feet in the northern mountains. Three feet in April. Mission Ridge gets a big dump as well up in Washington. Walla Walla, Washington. Allowing for an extended ski season as the mainstream media fear mongers on drought and no more snow. Now more strong winds and heavy snow are expected this week in Tahoe as well. And the snow is much needed in the West because it is dry there. Much needed wet pattern for the West Coast this week. And that could be bad news because April flurries did boost the Washington snowpack, but cold weather deals a blow to some of the crops east of the Cascades, and those look like fruit trees. In fact, there are red delicious apples near Prosser, and growers are concerned about possible crop damage due to the excessive cold in the spring. Ding, ding. And that brings us to the nor'easter, an April blast of winter. And then there's this guy. Let's get rid of him. Winter is clinging on for dear life as calendars mark off just over a month since the first day of spring. An impactful nor'easter is headed to the northeastern United States this week, according to Diamond. The storm arrives Monday and brings heavy rain to D.C. up through New York metro areas. The low pressure will deepen quickly, and that means behind it, snow. And that's Monday night. Snow and snow showers, central PA, all the way up through the Catskills. The Finger Lakes region into the Adirondacks, the Green Mountains, and northern New Hampshire. are going to be seeing winter weather, including the lake effect snow areas. And that is, those are the maps. Snow is one more. Cold and blustery Tuesday, which... Will be your lose day on the back end of this one with rain and snow showers. Let's check out the models for you. And let's just bring it back. Okay, so here's your Monday into Tuesday. Heavy snow in the southern Appalachians, uh, snowshoe region all the way up through central PA. And some snow moving into Washington at this point and Oregon, as well as the northern Sierras. By midday Tuesday, the storm will have moved up the entire spine of the Northeast, dumping the most significant snows from the Catskills up into the Adirondacks, according to this model, while some heavy snow moves into the high mountains. Much needed snow in the West. And that's through Wednesday. And there could be a late week blast of more snow in the Sierras, bringing the snowpack total there up to three plus feet in the central Sierras this week. That's good news. Now snow across the interior northeast. Pacific storms move inland and critical fire weather for the southwest. Good news on the Rio Ruidoso fire. It is 85% contained as of this morning, and it's looking good there. Now a developing storm will affect the northeast through tonight with accumulating snow across the interior and portions of the Great Lakes, including strong winds for the western Atlantic Ocean. Dry weather continues for portions of the southwest, with elevated to critical fire weather. Meanwhile, a series of Pacific storms will move inland with snow across the mountains accompanied by strong winds. Frost and freeze warnings out for the central portions of the U.S., including misery. So, heads up. It's going to be chilly in some areas. Now, take a look at this. This is the snowpack for Nagata, Japan, after more than 870 inches fell this winter. And this is the top of a flagpole with a bullhorn on top of it. Take a look at that measuring stick. Holy macaroni. And that's the state of snow in Japan. Just a decade ago, they said that we would never see snow. Now we see, well, 20 feet of it. Manam Volcano, high level eruption to 45,000 feet. This is the volcanic ash advisory. It was confirmed by Himawari 8. Aviation color code is orange, not red. We do have video of the explosion. We'll just blow that up. Pales in comparison to the <laughs> Honga Tonga blast. But a nice 
little puff. This is the island of Manam. And you can see other volcanoes there also puffing in that region. It's like puff, puff, puff. So watch the big blast from Manam, a little secondary puff coming from this volcano. Right there. <sighs> Pales in comparison to the Honga Tonga eruption. But this one, uh, one of the highest eruptions since then at 45,000 feet. Thank you, watchers. Come over and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Now, Krakatau. Also getting quite active this week in the Sunda Strait. The second eruptive phase this year. Several explosions to three or 4,000 feet. Nothing significant. But after 2.5 months since the last eruptive phase, the second such episode of vigorous explosions have occurred at the volcano and is now in progress. The eruptive activity started on the 15th of April with minor explosions that could be considered as the beginning of this series. Volcanian type explosions continue to be mild only, which quickly became stronger and near continuous on April 18th. Gray, ash-rich plumes rose up to an estimated 857 to 959 meters altitude, then reached up to 2.1 kilometers and drifted southwest. So Krakatau is becoming active. Seismic update. No quakes of note, but we have had some activity in the ring of fire as usual, but nothing significant, which is good news. All is quiet on the seismic front. Iceland still getting a little jiggy with these pulses of seismicity and these tremor clusters or seismic swarms that are occurring. And this one happens to be occurring offshore of the Recanis Peninsula in, on the Recanis Ridge. So we're keeping a close eye on activity as it ping pongs back and forth in this region. And it is still ongoing. Still ongoing on the sun. Increased solar activity. Continues with a fairly impulsive M4.4 after the X1.1. This is from a different region, and it was detected on the evening of April 17th. This time it was AR2992, nearing the southwest limb. And just prior to that, AR2994, turning around the limb, blasted off an X1.1, which included an R3-level radio blackout. And since then, the sun has been, well, quite active. There's the X flare. There's that uh, large M flare. There have been other M flares, three others at low levels, and a, at least a half a dozen C flares. Now, the good news is that AR2994 is the big producer here. That produced the X1.1, and that's this sunspot right here. It could be combining into a massive sunspot group. With X flare potential now at 20% for this spot. So that's, and we have about 10 days for this to rotate completely around to the other side and to be earth facing during that 10 day window. The other sunspot in question that popped off the M4.4 AR2992 is going to be turning away from us and will no longer be a threat. So the big threat vector here, both of these, we have 2994 and 2993. And they're right next to each other. Currently, let's get a current picture there. Pretty big sunspot uh, array there. Pretty big cluster. Biggest cluster we've seen as we head towards solar max. So we're going to keep a close eye on that for blast potential, earth facing, especially two days from now. And then the following week is going to be the big threat zone. Oops. Now, before we end tonight, a couple interesting things we want to talk about. And the first is the most interesting, the seven potential benefits of calendula tea and extract. Now, calendula, a flowering plant also known as pot marigold, is not actual marigold. In fact, it's a different plant completely. But if you find out where to get calendula, and you can buy it in many places online, this pot marigold is not the same as the ornamental marigold of the Tegetes genus, known in vegetable gardens. But calendula is a native Asian and southern European plant, has been traditionally used in Ayurvedic and Unani systems of medicine. The chemicals in calendula might help new tissue grow in wounds and decrease swelling in the mouth and throat. It also has dozens of other very beneficial properties, commonly used for wounds, rashes, infections, inflammation, and many other conditions. And so we'll leave you links to all of the potential benefits 
of calendula tea extract. It's packed with antioxidants. It may promote wound and skin ulcer healing. It could combat certain cancer cells. Has antifungal and antimicrobial properties. Supports oral health. May improve skin health. And many other uses. So check out calendula. Now, experiments contradicting the standard model are piling up. We've been railing on mainstream science about their lackadaisical attitude towards the theories that they claim to be using. When each and every time they're baffled or astounded, it's clear evidence that the theories they're using are incorrect. And maybe, just maybe, some scientists in the mainstream are waking up and smelling the roses. And that's a boom. It's a knowledge. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. And be safe. We love you. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. And watch all of our videos commercial-free. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom.